These are the graffiti towers in downtown LA. This is the Harbor Freeway Station, built underneath two highways. Two very different examples of development near transit stations. We're looking at three cities and comparing some of the best and worst land uses around transit stations. The graffiti towers sit along the LA Metro A-Line and L-Line. But for over 30 years, LA had no rail service at all. In the early 1900s, there was an extensive streetcar system that stretched across most of LA. But the LA Transit Authority bought the streetcar lines and converted them all to buses. And by the 1960s, the service had ended. By the 1980s, plans were developing for bringing rail service back to LA. Freeways had already been built around much of the city, and the state was now planning to build the Century Freeway through South Los Angeles. By this time, people knew the negative effects that freeways and highways brought to their neighborhoods, pollution, disruption, but sadly it still got built. The positive aside to the story is that they ended up building the train line in the middle. So I thought it would be interesting to look at what the development is like when you build a line in the middle of a highway versus in a neighborhood. Many of the lines that run through downtown were built on the lines from the previous Pacific Electric Railroad. The good thing about this is that development already existed around the stations and the tracks. So when these graffiti towers do eventually open, it'll be a great place to live and to have great walkability, great transit access. The C line still provides really important access to the residents of this area, especially to get to LAX, but the development around the stations will always be limited because people don't really want to live or interact directly next to the highway. The C line still has a good amount of ridership, but to incentivize ridership at other stations, LA developed the Transit Oriented Communities Program. And if we look at the station with the biggest increase in ridership in 2025, it's one of the stations that had new development built through this program, which is pretty cool. Our next stop is the DC area. The Orange Line presents a similar story where we can see two different approaches to building stations. We'll compare the development in Fairfax County and Arlington. The stations in Arlington were built along the planned commercial corridors and now have dense development, walkable neighborhoods, and some of the nicest quality of life. Continuing on the Orange Line into Fairfax County, we can see a change in the station development. Fairfax County placed more importance on cars, so instead chose for the Orange Line for, to be routed along I-66. These stations are far from the centers of commercial development. For example, if you want to get some of the best Vietnamese food, you can go to Eden Center and Falls Church, but sadly you can't take the metro to get them. You can see a similar pattern along the other Orange Line station, although some are beginning to see dense development nearby. You can see the difference in the neighborhood character when you build with transit and people in mind. If you're interested in more about the planning of the DC Metro, I suggest reading the book The Great Society Subway, which really dives deep into the process. The last city we'll visit in today's video is Dallas. Most people wouldn't expect Dallas to have any transit, but they actually have a sizable light rail system with plans on opening an extension in the North Dallas suburbs that will connect to the existing system as well as the airport. But many of the local governments within DART are now debating the effectiveness of the system and whether to continue to provide funding. Much of the discussion is around the profitability and the ridership levels of the system, but I think the mindset is the wrong way to approach transit. No one ever complains when a highway doesn't make profit. Additionally, the low ridership of some stations can be attributed to the lack of transit-oriented development, as well as low frequency on the system. Looking at some of the lowest ridership stations, we can look at the University of Dallas on the Orange Line. This line connects to both airports, as well as downtown, and the station is within walking distance of the University of Dallas. But the land use around the station is not optimal. All the land is owned by the university, and although it's near a river, it's protected by a levee. The station also faces issues of proximity to a highway. Developing the station area instead, with walkability in mind, could improve ridership as well as pedestrian dignity. I think bringing a similar program to Dallas that incentivizes development near transit stations could help to increase the ridership on DART and actually reduce the traffic on the highways by taking people out of cars. 
Check out my video on the Las Colinas People Mover to find out about an abandoned system that connected to the Dart light rail. Let me know what you think about this video, and if you have any ideas for improving some of the worst transit stations in your city. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.